back with us now, Forbes Media Chair, Editor-in-Chief Steve Forbes, my former boss. Steve, now we've got this story coming in. Politico breaking in the news. White House insiders are saying Bidenomics is not catching on with voters. But, you know, Steve, next week they want to celebrate the anniversary of the Inflation Reduction Act. What do you think? Well, it's like the Mets celebrating the World Series right now. <laughs> the people see it ain't happening. And what's amazing is they thought they could go around to the American people, say they've got a lot of great spending programs, even though standards of living are not going up, and convince the American people that all is well. You know, Herbert Hoover, back in the Great Depression, was accused of always saying, which he didn't, but accused of saying, prosperity is just around the corner. Trust us. No, the American people don't. And when they say inflation is slowing, that still means prices are going up. And people are noticing, guess what, at the gas pump? Prices are going up again. All right, so now we've got a CNN poll. Two-thirds of, of CNN uh, uh, voters that they polled, excuse me, voters that CNN polled, disapprove of Biden, right? 51% believe the economy is in a downturn and getting worse. Then you had Moody's uh, downgrading U.S. banks. We've got interest rates tripling under Biden to deal with inflation from government overspending. Steve, it feels like the economy is on this loop. What do you think? Well, the economy is suffering from the uh, economic equivalent of walking pneumonia. Uh, some parts are doing okay, but other parts are not. And when you have the headwinds out there, the Federal Reserve is going to raise interest rates again. They still believe you fight inflation by depressing the economy, making people poorer. You've got companies are coping, especially a lot of commercial entities, coping with a lot of uh, debt that's coming due. They have to renegotiate interest rates. Uh, and consumer debt is rising. Interest rates on mortgages are starting to inch up again. So you look at that scene and you wonder, where's the real push going to come from? Yeah, the government can spend money, but where do they get it from? From the American people. So it's, that is a zero, less than a zero-sum game, because we know government wastes money. So, but do you see, because of the rates going up, do you see more U.S. banks failing? <coughs> because Moody's just downgraded 10 banks and warned six other big banks of a possible downgrade. We understand that to fight over, you know, the valid, validity of downgrades, but it feels like cons bank consumer lending is hitting a wall because Americans have lost 17 percent of their spending power under Biden. Fannie Mae says eight out of 10 don't feel good about buying a house right now. It's too expensive. Do you see uh, more potential U.S. bank failures? Well, I think there'll be uh, some banks getting in trouble. Uh, after all, we had a generation of suppressed interest rates. A lot of loans were based on, on the fact that interest rates would stay low forever. They didn't. Now the uh, piper is coming that has to be paid with higher rates. But also, banks are being hit with more regulation. They're having to put aside more capital. That means less lending. At a time when the economy is slow, faltering, even if you're Joe Biden, you don't want those kind of headwinds, but regulators are creating them by saying to banks, put more money aside, which means less money for consumers, less money for businesses, which means less economic growth. Even the White House should be able to understand that simple arithmetic. Well, Steve, you're an economic historian. You've been studying administrations for, you know, for a long time. What do you make of what government data is showing? Because before the pandemic, under Trump, median household incomes rose to their highest level ever. ever. That happened in 2019. The poverty rate hit an all-time low. More Americans were employed than ever before. Jobless rates for African Americans, Hispanics, Americans without a high school diploma, all, all they, they basically got more jobs. Those jobless rates hit record lows. You saw a blue-collar boom. So wh how does the Trump economy stack up against Biden and other economies? <laughs> the difference between day and night. And guess what two big things helped make uh, those great numbers possible? One was the tax cut they passed in 2017 that the Democrats would say was going to uh, destroy the economy. No, it didn't. Government revenues went up, not down. The problem was spending, not government revenues. And by the way, today, government revenues are not meeting expectations, so the deficit is worse, not just because of spending, but because the income isn't coming in. So then the other big thing the Trump administration did was deregulation. So we should be producing, for example, two to three million more barrels of oil today. That would be lowering pump prices rather than having the Biden administration waging war against one of our biggest assets, our huge deposits of oil and gas. It's insane. And the idea that their, uh, the Transportation Department, Liz, came out with a 696-page rule that's going to ban uh, gasoline-powered trucks and, and, and cars by 2032, new ones. This is insane. 
It can't happen. They destroy the economy doing it. Got it. 696 Steve. pages. What are they thinking? Yeah, who's going to read that? They don't even read it. Steve, no. we love reading your stuff. Steve, I could talk to you all night. Thanks for coming on. It's good to Thank have you on. Thank you, Liz.